sitting Congressman Eric Swalwell, a man best known for his involvement with the Chinese spy, goes on Twitter to demand that people not accept the presidential election results. Is it insurrection? Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So a sitting California congressman whose name is Eric Swalwell, who's best known for having a physical relationship with a Chinese spy, has taken to Twitter a platform I'm sure that he talks bad about when nobody's listening to demand that his people not accept the presidential results. Now here we can see that it's all, I have, I've made it larger. Representative Eric Swalwell, not going quietly. You're not either. Let's get loud and let's get going. So he put that tweet out. We can see here that according to Google, he's a representative of uh, a Democrat in California of the 14th district. I can tell you that his famous, he's famous for having had a physical relationship with a Chinese spy. He claimed he didn't know about it. But now you have to wonder when he's putting out these tweets that seem to be calling for an insurrection, seem to be calling for a rejection of the democratically elected president-elect Donald Trump and many other uh, electoral results, right? Not just the, the president happened on, on Tuesday from the time that he, he put out this tweet. There turns out that there was a protests launched in Chicago and other locations around the country. They're calling Donald Trump everything under the sun. Apparently he doesn't like all of these groups, which I find it's strange because none of those groups like each other. However, I suppose in the Middle East, they'll be happy to know that they have the support of all the women and all of the LGB. That will make them happy in Gaza, I'm sure. As you can see, they went outside of the Trump building in Chicago, talking about all of the things that they are complaining about exercising their democratic rights while demanding that the world remove democratic rights. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. You can't, you can't wrap your mind around the foolishness of, of like the juxtaposition where on the one hand you're screaming and complaining that you don't like the results of the will of the people. Then you say, but I'm the people. So you have to listen to my will. I mean, (laughs) what are you talking about? You have to accept the fact that you lost, whether you're a sitting congressman or not. But I can still hear them screaming about January 6th. And is this guy not doing the same thing? Is this guy now not committing and, you know, calling for armed uprising against the democratically elected individuals of the country? That's what it looks like to me. I mean, this, this, this video is more about the foolishness of it and how in Canada we have to prepare ourselves for this kind of absurdity because it doesn't just stop with this Chicago one. I'd like to draw special attention to these two geniuses, these, these pillars of the community that are saying Trump out, stand up, fight back, all power to the people. Unless of course you participated in an election, then you get no power at all. Unless, of course, you're an individual who voted for the Republican Party, which it, this was a red wave, right? Don't, don't misunderstand the results. There's not one um, demographic that, <laughs> that the, the, the Republicans didn't win. But these guys, <laughs> all power to the people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, are people allowed to participate in, in, in an election? Or would you prefer to take that election away from them just like you did with the nomination committee? I mean, I think we have to start looking at the fact that the further and further the left goes, the less freedom they talk about for all of their inclusivity and all of their wanting all of these rights. They seem to be willing to strip them away from people in a second if they don't get their own way. They can't accept the fact that they are 
you know, in a, in a system where people are choosing, they don't want you to have choices that disagree with them. And I think many of us that are aware of the system are, are seeing that the far left has gotten a little bit too, like, you know, the true colors, as they would say, are, have come out, right? So now we'll go over to this fella, Dom. I'll go with Luker, breaker of narratives, as he's looking at a uh, an on a, 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 a protest that's gathering, a gathering. And this one is in Philadelphia, and it's an anti-Trump protest. And I would like to point out to everybody the red flags that have the small thing up in, in the upper corner. There seems to be quite a few of them. Now, when you are a red flag with a small thing in the upper corner, you are representing many of the countries that have a red flag with a small thing in the upper corner. And, of course, the two that come to mind are the USSR and the Chinese People's Republic. So we can see that this is communism walking around downtown Philadelphia, the, literally the home of the American Revolution, where it started, right, with the, with the you know, Liberty Bell and all of that stuff, marching around with communist flags, demanding that the democratically elected individuals of the country not be accepted. I mean, what are, you, what, are, what are we talking about here? And this is all triggered off by this, you know, democratically elected congressman in California. Uh, seems a bit strange to me. But there's, you know, 30 or 40 of them. This next one's pretty funny, though, right? Because here this guy, John Ferguson, reposted from Chuck Calesto that the protests are broken out at NYU. You know, I, I love this one, right? You got a stroller there. You got this giant poster. So I don't know how they printed that up pretty quickly, but they seem to have had the, <laughs> that ready to go. And then pulling up the rear is the police, right? <laughs> Those are cops right there. So there, we're not talking about a massive crowd. And this is New York, right, where you could get a lot of people if you wanted to. Now, I get a lot of people who were trying to tell me that, you know, this is, the, this is just what you should expect, and it's because the electoral college and all of that stuff, but it's, it's not. This is the will of the people. And I'll show you why, why I say that. So first, we're going to look at the AP results. And AP, Associated Press, the results from the, this I got directly from the internet. Now, apparently Nevada and, and Arizona, though they're pink, are going to, they're like Trump's at 53% of the vote and one of them and 52% in the other one. But he's, you know, a few hundred thousand votes ahead and they're, you know, 90% reporting and all of that kind of stuff. So that'll probably take Trump's 295 number and push it up into whatever it is. It's, it's uh, I think it's 16 or 17 votes there between Arizona and, and uh, Nevada. So it'll put it at like 310. Let's call it. But if you just look at the sea of red, I mean, the, the country is tired of the far left narrative. But people will say, oh, no, because they like to say, oh, yeah, but that's, that's the Electoral College. However, if you look right here, you can note that Donald Trump won the popular vote as well. And Remember, as a Canadian, as you're watching this, people cast their vote directly for the president of the country. They're not like the system that we use in Canada. They, they cast directly for Trump, so they would have had to t tick a box that said Trump. And he's millions of votes ahead. Millions. So if the shoe were on the other foot, the far left would be screaming, oh, look, we won the popular vote, but we lost it, because I remember them saying that before. This time, however, Donald Trump has won both the Electoral College and the popular vote. However, in what people might not realize is that there was a lot of elections happening at the same time. So there, are, there are, were other things that were taking place, right? Now, one of the things that was happening was the U.S. Senate. So all of the places that you see colored were um, elections that were being held for senators at the same time. And as you can see, most of the area has gone. Now, if they, they got the stripes in them, they weren't holding an election. And the yellow one up there in the corner of Vermont, that's for Bernie Sanders. He won that as an independent, I believe. That's why it's yellow. 
the other ones that were already lined out, they weren't holding senatorial elections. But you can see up in the corner that the Republicans gained three seats and the Democrats lost three seats, which of course gives them the majority in the Senate. So now we have the majority of the Electoral College, we have the majority of the popular vote, and people voted to give the Republicans their majority in the Senate. Okay, so that's three out of four, right? Because there's one more that we need to look at. Well, there's actually two that I want to show you. Now, this one is pretty, this one is the one that really should be shutting down all of this narrative that, it, that the people might be split or divided or what have you. This is the Congress. And so this is like the House for Canadians, right? And as you can see, the, well, look at the red. I mean, there's pockets of blue and around the cities and New Mexico is really blue. Even Washington is half red. Oregon is more than half red. California's interior is primarily red. There's very few places in this whole entire map that we don't see red being, the, the Republicans being the representatives of the individual people, right? This is the, the house, right? So this is the, the, the main body of people. This is where the guy who sent out the tweet calling for an insurrection, this is where he gets his seat from. And so if we look, we'll see that there's a couple that are in pink. Um, and when I read the projections and when I was looking at it, like Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, and Washington, all of those are going to give the majority of 218. When you add them into the pool, the Republicans will have the majority in the House. They will have the majority in the Senate. They have the majority in the popular vote, and they have the majority of the Electoral College. So now we're looking at four out of five, right? There was some other ones that, that transpired. Just one other one, some of the gov uh, governor races that happened. And we can, we can look at how many of them went red. Vermont went red. New Hampshire went red. Montana, North Dakota, Utah, uh, Indiana, West Virginia. And I think that one's Missouri have all gone red, which gives the overall, as you can see up top, 23 and 27 is 50. So the overall um, governors in the majority of the governors in the United States of America are Republicans. And now we can see that of the five choices, it's all Republican, which means it's people that want, they want a common sense on their economy. That's going to be number one. They want the borders to be closed. That's going to be number 1.5, I suppose. And honestly, there's uh, they want, you know, just to go back to a better standard of living, which is exactly what most people want. And I think that anyone who still holds dearly to this notion that somehow the people, it was split down the, the middle because of the narrative of, remember that they had all of the press working in their favor, the far left. They had all of the economic um, bulwark going against everybody. Oh, there was only Twitter, really, that was not, that was allowing people to express their opinions. And as a result of that, it still went this way, despite all of their best efforts. So here you have the, the results of the popular vote, the electoral college, the congressional vote, the senatorial vote, and the governors. This is only can be termed as a red wave. I mean, there's nothing, there's not like you can say, well, you have the Senate, but we have the, the House, none of that. This is smooth sailing. This is four years of the Republicans. And I'm not sure four years will be enough to reverse it, but I do know this. I know that what's going to happen next is you're going to see people fleeing from all of the DEI and all of the um, ESG and all of that stuff. Those, kind, those companies are going to be leaving in droves. Because now people will realize that they don't have to support those, comp those um, uh, companies. And those politicians will also begin to abandon those processes. Because if you're out there and you're in the far left and you're upset about the results and you're listening to this, realize something, that most of the time those politicians will tell you whatever it is you want to hear and those businesses will go wherever the money is. Now you had this massive 10-year experiment where you thought you were going to be able to you know, brainwash everybody into doing it your way. You were going to get them all to march along to the beat of a different drummer. 
And the reality is people want freedom more than they want Marxism. The reality is people want to have, you know, a, a good standard of living because the one flaw with your logic is that the hard work doesn't change. So people are still working hard, but now they're working hard and having nothing in return. Now they're working hard and they're coming home and their neighbors do not think the way that they do because their neighbors just got to, into the country and they're importing different ideologies and different things like that. And you could say to yourself, well, that's not really the way people, we want people to think. And I get you. That's what you've been trying to convince people of since, you know, for since at least 2016. But people don't agree with you. And the 99% of people don't agree with you. This is why the, the well, this speaks for itself, right? This red wave. Now, this congressman should be immediately stripped of his position if that's a thing that they can do. He should be impeached or whatever they got to do to get get that guy out. Or they can't go on Twitter. I love how the far left hates Twitter until they want to use it. That kind of makes me laugh, but I suppose that's a different video. And this one, I, I just wanted to show everybody the reality of what's going on and how despite all of the best calls to action about how we're going to be fair for everyone and all of that stuff, when, it, when faced with a democratic election that doesn't go their way, all of the veneer of being democratic, all of the pretending and all of the smokescreen of, of wanting to participate in the system falls to the wayside and the reality comes out from under the bed and you know now we're looking at the monster that is, re is the truth of it. Now we can see that the, the way that people really think when they're not when they're confronted with some with results that they weren't happy about. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.